Greetings dear friends. Thank you for joining our circle for ongoing work with the meditation for the common good. In the current cycle, we work with the energy of areas. And as we work with the uh, within the orb of the new moon, we bring our focus together to the topic that we've been holding for the last couple of weeks since the full moon, which is related to the theme of the Cardinal Cross, cleaning the house of religion and politics. And the topic that was suggested uh, from meditation and sharing of our subjective support group, custodians of the purpose group, is the topic cleansing and clarifying at the causal level, making way for new relations in politics, economics, and religion. So today we come again, bringing our focus to this topic, sharing our impressions and thought forms of solution that could help humanity in its evolutionary path. And together, using the energy of the new moon, we will meditate, strengthening those thought forms and radiating them towards humanity. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So, as we come together, we attune again to our purpose in this project, which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group meditation which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and for Earth's overall planetary life, which enables the recognition and manifestation of the spiritual principles and laws and helps to bring them to life in all areas of human activity and which magnetizes thought forms of solution and supports practical actions that lead to the advancement of humanity. So we're working with the fire element on the Cardinal Cross, as Alexander said, exploring how we can support the process of cleaning house in politics and religion. We align with the sign of Aries and we can just briefly touch its four keynotes which are to express the will to be and do. To unfold the power to manifest. To enter into battle for the Lord. And to arrive at unity through effort. Let's hold these keynotes as we prepare for our work today beginning our group alignment with our naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today, 
in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hello, I'm Alexander Ilchuk calling in today from Warsaw in Poland. Welcome. Rebecca. Rebecca calling in from Mapleton on the Sunshine Coast, the east coast of Australia. Welcome. Gillian. Gillian from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Andrea. This is Andrea Ross. I'm calling from Southern Florida. Welcome to you all. Welcome. Aneta. This is Annette Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome. Barclay. <laughs> Hello, uh, this is Barclay Milne calling in from Querétaro, Mexico. Welcome. Birgitta. Greetings, Birgitta from Denmark. Welcome. Carlos. Carlos, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Carlos. Darcy. Hello, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome, Fred. Fred, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Fred. John. Greetings, this is John joining from Missouri, USA. Welcome. Josepha. I'm Josepha, uh, Barcelona, Spain. Welcome. Kiki. Kiki from Washington, D.C., USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, everybody. This is Martine Colleen from Chateauneau, Belgium. 
welcome. Michael. Aloha, everyone. This is Michael calling in from Hawaii. Welcome. Nicole. This is Nicole Claude from Maryland, USA. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, this is Ruth. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration and selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. So let us hold a minute of silence, recognizing our unity and focus on the common good. This month we are holding in our focus the topic of cleansing and clarifying and the causal level, making way for new relations in politics, economics and religion. There were three questions suggested for our reflections during the full moon meditation. I think they'd be very willing to be. What needs cleansing and clarifying to allow us to move forward towards the causal view of humanity's problems? What abstractions to the common good do I see at play in the way the series of politics, economics, and religions are related to each other. And how could the relations between politics, economics, and religions be clarified so as to support the common good and well-being of humanity? So let us hold our meditative space open and share 
impressions and thoughts that we received during this month and sharing the possible thought forms of solution that could help humanity to overcome the current crisis and bring us all to the next evolutionary stage of development. So please unmute yourself when you are ready to share, or if you're muted by organizer, just uh, raise your hand and we will unmute you. Hi, this is Tracy. Um, I just wrote down a quick summary of each. Um, since we've been going over this for the last month and, and brooding and pondering and, and sharing impressions. And for the first question, what needs cleansing and clarifying to allow us to move toward a causal view? for humanity's problems. And what came up uh, quite often was what needs cleansing and clarifying are the emotional body and mental bodies uh, of each of us in, you know, individually and eventually by being conscious of this and observant our, upon ourselves. Um, it will eventually affect uh, our etheric body and eventually those around us and radiate outward uh, into general humanity. Um, this will open a pathway and cleansing for the causal body and causal view for the problems to be um, received and uh, reflected, uh, solutions being reflected outward from that area. Second was, uh, what obstructions do we see uh, to the common good in all three of these spheres? And I think the common consensus was basically selfish motivation versus selfless motivation. So, the third question, how can relationships between politics, economics, and religions become clarified so that they can support the common good and well-being of humanity? Um, I think right orientation was one of them. And finding a common ground between the triplicity as they're really only pieces of a whole. They're not totally separate. They are pieces of the whole. So unfolding these uh, together uh, con and consciously will uh, help in the conscious uh, unfolding and evolution for, for humanity's purpose through these three individual yet not really separate um, processes for us to do this. They're just uh, venues or ways for us to, to unfold the consciousness and the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, for summarizing some of the impressions that have been shared during our quarter moon meetings and uh, also at the community impressions board. Uh, I just um, pasted the link um, to the community impressions board so you can read more of what been shared by uh, us uh, all. And uh, please, uh, if you, um, have any following up impressions uh, keep using this uh, community impressions board but also can email us
Hi, um, Jill here. Uh, I just received something recently and it uh, relates to religion, um, which is quite relevant for what we're talking about. And um, the master DK indicated just after the Second World War, the general line of human thinking that would produce a condition and condition the new world religion. He wrote that for the first time in history an approach could be organized on a worldwide scale and consciously undertaken. He said that because of the crisis through which humanity had just passed and was at the time passing, men and women of vision and of inclusive thinking and all the churches in inverted commas of every world uh, would end their doctrinal differences, agree on the essential religious truths, and then proceed unitedly and with some uniformity of ritual and ceremonial to approach together, which was stressed, the center of spiritual power. He asked whether the enlightened members of the great world religions in the East and West could not get together and plan for such an innovative undertaking. They could inaugurate the mode of spiritual approach which would unify their efforts and could establish at least the seed of the new world religion and that came from problems of humanity pages 161-162 and there was also a book which could be um, interesting and it was by William Cantwell Smith and it was called the meaning and end of religion, a new approach to the religious traditions of mankind. And he says in this book, apparently, I haven't read it, I must admit, he says that the term religion should be dispensed with and replaced with a different concept, a dynamic relationship between cumulative tradition, rituals, art, music, theologies, etc., and personal faith. And uh, this is me talking. Maybe politics and economics also need, at the least, to be stripped down so that the values within them that are soul led can be retained, while other similar qualities can be added to fill any voids created by the expulsion of outdated ideas. The destructive forces of Ray 1 may be needed before rebuilding the increased aid of Ray 2. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Hello, this is John. Um, so what arrived for me was this all seems to be a matter of attention and that if humanity and the individuals in these roles and these, these influential, influential aspects of society can move their attention from individual concerns beyond the concerns even of their groups to that of, of humanity as a whole and to the soul consciousness many of these problems i believe would go away now other problems would present themselves but again it would take us to a, another another level collectively and a, a saying comes to mind it's that that saying as you evolve problems dissolve and it's that melting away i think as as people go from individual to unified consciousness these um barriers Kind of melt away and and kind of what's coming to mind a little bit is the um in the bailey books there's that idea of the etheric webbing between the chakras and how they melt as the as the fires um raise up and then the um the, the energies also descend from from the spiritual planes and so there's there's that and then also of course the the energy follows thought and so if the thought can be moved to the higher to the causal levels then again a lot of these things become mundane and not even worthy of attention. But the issue now is only a few people, um, you know, in, in the collective body are focusing their attention here and are kind of busy and other kind of um, in the weeds. And so anything that could do that, um, you know, obviously 
the work of this group and and other things that are happening in the esoteric schools that that's what those are steps towards that and i think this is happening more and more there's these as we get into the aquarian energies more and more there's this awakening happening um over time um i, I was thinking as the um previous speaker was speaking about religion I, kind of what dropped in during that was there was i, I was thinking of there's throughout all the world's major religions, which my understanding is each one's on a particular ray, they each have the same fundamental message. So all the great avatars have the same, the same message, the same current, the ageless wisdom runs throughout the currents of all, all religions, as we all know. Now, if you could break that down, you know, as, as anything comes along with time, it adds in complexity over time. And so it, it starts simply, and then you add more and more. And so as the previous speaker mentioned, if that could be removed and broken down to its essence, that would certainly go a long way. And I, I think this is true for everything. As everything's around for a long time, it gets more and more complex, and then you lose sight of what it was originally created for. And so there's a need of that continual renewal, um, creation, destruction, and renewal, and those that continuous cycle um, going on. And so I think, I think again with these things in this way all these all these um problems kind of take care of themselves in a way so in a way it sounds like a simple solution but obviously it's it's complicated at the individual level and and takes time and the key is probably just expediting this um this transition which seems to be happening but again i think this is happening more and more and i've, I've been seeing a um a quickening in in humanity and just society and just development along all um aspects i mean we're moving very fast compared to previous decades and you know obviously even previous centuries and so um that's what had come in for me and um thank you this is an edit from denmark um I thought about uh, the um, renewal of uh, the religions, and there you you have to be careful not to forget all uh, the old works uh, that is um, 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 with the Davis. I know uh, Ledbetter and and uh, Jeffrey Hudson has, uh, and I think also Annie Besant has written uh, books, especially Ledbetter has written books about religious work uh, and sacraments, uh, where he has um, shown that um, with the, the um, reformation from uh, the Protestantism and from Catholicism, they um, meant it well, but they missed something uh, from the sacraments uh, where uh, the work with the devas is essential. And he has um, tried to reconstruct it in, in the religion that, that he um, 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 was founding. Um, and it, it is very interesting to, to read the book about the, the sacraments uh, because he has, uh, he he had the 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 uh, kept, uh, the clairvoyance and the 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 uh, knowledge to see what the divas did and what they didn't did, uh, do uh, during the the sacraments and uh, uh, I think it is necessary for us to have more occult uh, knowledge um, so. Uh, not to destroy all this ancient uh, work with the devas uh, um, when we are reconstructing and, and uh, letting go of old things that we don't think is necessary, but perhaps it is uh, necessary for the inner work with the devas. Um, that was just a thought. Uh, thank you.
I agree strongly with the last the last speaker. Um, I think it's with the devas that will create the new world. It has to be a joint venture, I believe. Also, um, so many people said so many interesting things, but um, I think uh, I, I agree with everyone. But I think that um, one way to look at it is to look to bring in education, because as we all know. Um, to bring to make much, much of this to happen, um, people have to be aware and awake um, and able to have some um, awareness of their their own soul and the higher realms. And so I come to education, have to bring in education again and say, well, there's a something here from Esoteric Psychology, Volume Two. The failure of education today to take into consideration the whole man or to allow scope for activity of an integrating center, a central point of consciousness, and a determining factor within the mechanism of the one who must be helped to adapt himself to his life condition. This, above everything else, is responsible for much trouble. So I think all the movements for holistic education and movements to help students learn to be creative and think for themselves as well as learn as, as well as to broaden their knowledge i um, in the schools is a direct strategy for uh bringing in all the wonderful things that we can vision thank you This is Anneli from Denmark again. I totally agree. And I think some of the education uh, should be in the line of uh, education with uh, uh, about the race and to learn about how uh, yourself is um, working with these race. Because basically uh, the, the needed change is from the sixth ray to the seventh ray. Uh, and the way we can work with these rays. And the seventh ray is more about cooperation and uh, using the rays constructively in the group works. And, and uh, basically group works in, instead of um, uh, from the sixth ray, it was more uh, leader uh, leader uh, based uh, hierarchical uh, hierarchical uh, work but seventh ray is more group work and you see it in 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 films uh, uh, for instance in 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 series of crimes where uh, uh, for instance uh, the uh, educate the the um, detectives has all all always a different group of workers you have the uh, the nerd the, the the fifth ray and you have the fourth uh, ray the creative one who is going to thinking out of the box and you have um a first ray um force uh, uh, working uh, will strong uh, person and you have all the race uh, uh, all all always in the groups um, to to make it work more efficiently, and I think we are going to think in these matters uh, more and uh, cooperate um, more between the the uh, the cases between uh, religion, econo economic, and and uh, um, uh, I, I don't. Uh, recall the, the last one, but but all all things are, are um, working together, and and if you make a change in one place, then uh, you can feel it in in the other. Um, so it is about cooperation and group works. I think. Thank you. I just, Tracy, well, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I'd gone before, so please go ahead. 
I did too. <laughs> I was just gonna uh, segue off of what was uh, just said too that, um, you know, the politics, economic, religion that we're looking at, you know, they're just pathways uh, for us for expression, for us to use as expression um, to help develop our um, and unfold consciousness for the human kingdom. And I know in uh, the telepathy book, um, they talk about the entire human kingdom eventually becoming a major magnetic center on the planet, which will invoke all the higher kingdoms uh, upon the formless planes and evoke the lower kingdoms or subhuman planes uh, upon the planes of form. And uh, in turn, humanity will provide the area of mind within whose ring pass not the subhuman kingdoms will find their correspondence of the universal mind for their unfoldment also. So, and they summarize by saying that this is the goal of all human service. So it's interesting that we have these three, this, this triangle of politics, economic, and religion, this uh, triplicity of pathways that we can use um, to help the expression. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say, thanks. Hello, this is John again. Um, something I that dropped in when there was the discussion on ensuring that we maintain um, the elements of the devas and not to allow that now to get lost. Um, it seems as if primordial primordial knowledge never gets lost. It's always it always gets expressed in some ways. These major energetic rays and, and energetics that work. Um, you know, as Tracy had mentioned, just as they seek expression through the human human kingdom, try as you might, you can't repress them. And I, I think to alchemy, where throughout time, there's been this, you know, I hate to use the word conspiracy, but it kind of is everyone wants to, the majority wants to repress these, um, these fields of knowledge and kind of snuff things like alchemy, but they always kind of come back, no matter, no matter how badly, you know, people, people believe these things are kind of, they've gone away, they resurface again and again. And so you really, it doesn't seem like it could really happen. And I believe that the deva, the devas may, are likely in the same category. I'd, I'd say they, they, they are as much as I could know. Um, but these spiritual truths and these things that, uh, that outlast humanity um, and, and human beings in all life on the material plane just can, cannot go away. And so I think, you know, there is lost time, perhaps, but again, I, I think it's like a chain link fence. If one link is cut, the energy will just go around to another link and, it'll just, and more. And you can keep cutting the links, but it'll just find expression somewhere. And th this may come through dreams or, or various, various other things. Um, another interesting thing that came to mind with in regards to that and in, in this preservation is I think of a there's a business book I, I read years ago. Um, and I understand this isn't th that type of forum, but it, it seems equally relevant. There's a statement that was preserve this core, stimulate progress. And so this is this idea that when you break something down, you break it down to its elemental components or and, and the basics, but you ensure you keep the core competency and that which makes it the, the thing itself. And I believe this this that would be the primordial essence or the, the quintessence of the, the thing itself, or, or perhaps you'd say in this tradition, the monad. And that cannot be tampered with. And then what you do is when you remove these inessentials, it will speed up your progress, but in a more pure way, and it stimulates the progress. And so I think if we remember those two things in each of those, in, in each one of these fields of endeavor, the um, preserving the core and stimulating the progress, all of these other things perhaps will be um, will be taken away. And if we forget and mess with the core, I think there's um, these protective mechanisms in place that just, um, you know, they, they kind of protect us from ourselves, both individually and, um, you know, collectively as a, as, as humanity that um, won't let us do too, too much damage, um, so to speak, but perhaps there, there could be some delays. Thank you. Hi, this is Michael. Uh, regarding education, perhaps we should consider also adding uh, educating 
not only ourselves, but those around us, humanity as a whole, in the laws of rebirth and cause and effect. Uh, especially the law of cause and effect, the Tibetan says it's more important, uh, the teaching of that law is more important than rebirth even. Uh, as we look at uh, these three departments, uh, economics, politics, religion, they are, are and will be instrumental in the reappearance of the Christ. Uh, so solving those problems with them is paramount. Um, it seems to me that there are competing ideologies within each of these departments. And those competing ideologies each have just a small sliver of truth in them. And when we consider the, the ideology to which resonates most with us and consider it uh, as the most important and everything else unimportant, uh, we lose sight of the importance that it really is. It then to me seems to be important to listen, listen, that's why we have two ears and one mouth, uh, listen to others' thoughts, others' concerns, uh, and become aware of where there are similarities and focus on the similarities uh, and express love. Uh, love ourselves, love our brothers, sisters, love all of humanity, love all kingdoms of nature. Um, ultimately, the solution in my mind is expressing love to all because we all are one. Thank you. Indeed, it's very interesting uh, link between the three main fields. And if if we uh, consider a religion, field of religion, contemporarily expressed as the field of values, and to a large degree in the Western society, this uh, space of value holders is pretty much vacant uh, because religion institutions religious institutions are, are not performing their function in the proper way. So uh, an example of the uh, current uh, crisis of the war uh, in uh, Ukraine and Europe to a large extent is that um, the uh, economic interests of involved parties uh, of uh, European countries are such that they are uh, all interested in receiving uh, gas and oil in the fixed price and yet the values uh, this of freedom that they all hold they have to be protected by politicians and politicians are uh, very linked to uh, economical uh, group interests like uh, economic interests of uh, different groups of different interest groups and so, uh, in a way, the value of freedom has to be expressed now by uh, people of European nations demanding, uh, on one hand, 
uh, the, the higher good, but also, on the other hand, uh, agreeing to sacrifices, because uh, uh, if uh, European countries would agree uh, for uh, embargo for Russian oil and gas, it means much higher prices that everyone would have to pay in daily life, in daily uh, expenses will increase. And so that's where that cleansing of those houses become very practical. Yes, on one hand, we are uh, all for the values of freedom, but on the other hand, we have to pay for that in a very practical way. And uh, so uh, the system, European system, uh, it's the, based on the uh, pragmatism. And so in a way, it's time to cleanse that pragmatism, adding the note of uh, values and uh, uh, holding the, uh, that space of, uh, creating that space of value expressions uh, in a new, completely new way. Hopefully, this will drive um, many of the countries towards um, use of alternative energy, that it can really bring forth um, the whole uh, scope of, again, of saving the earth for, as you say, um, more practical reasons, perhaps, but um, pragmatic reasons. But hopefully, it will drive that new vision and, and actually uh, hurry up the um the process of of um developing and turning to renewable energy uh, this is lynn thank you This is Anita from Denmark. Uh, I totally agree, and I think uh, it is a process that is already uh, in 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 uh, uh, going on in every uh, European country. The problem is we can't do it in a week. It takes time to to um, change your energy system, um, although it has been planned. Uh, 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 in, in many countries uh, uh, for years, it is just not something you can do uh, uh, in in a short time. And this war sort of caught everybody uh, off guard because uh, nobody expected uh, it uh, to be so violent. Um, and nobody expected it to be. Uh, because everybody uh, uh, thought that uh, we could negotiate um, the problem away. So uh, I think everybody is uh, caught off guard and um, the problem is it takes time uh, to, to uh, change and it takes um, um, uh, it takes products that you just don't have enough of uh, just in, in, in a short time. 
So yes, I guess you, you have all three um, subjects in play here at one time. It's, it's a very good uh, example. You have politics, economy, and um, religious uh, thoughts uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the moral um, thoughts about uh, we don't want to, to buy gas uh, uh, from Russia. But on the other hand, we can't uh, uh, let people um, uh, freeze uh, uh, to death in their houses. So you have to have uh, some sort of alternative uh, uh, and not uh, go back to what we already has um, gone away from uh, coal and and other um, polluting uh, things. So it is uh, 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 you 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 have to make a very delicate balance here. Thank you. Lynn, again, um, I think, I don't know, but I think perhaps in Europe, you're in so forth, I think you're probably, you've probably made more advancements in a more clear way than we have here in the US. But I'm hoping that the whole, whole world will um, put more importance on, on the renewables than, than we've been able to so far. Um, this might be a motivator for that. Um, and I think I heard Tracy speak one time about what the future might look like um, and how it may be more decentralized. And it seems like um, that might be a step in that direction, even if there are, if, if the larger issues can eventually be um, managed and mastered uh, between countries and so forth, maybe there will be um, communities of people who, um, um, are, cl are connected electronically, but who live in, in uh, smaller groups in areas um, where they live in harmony with nature and um, are fairly self-sufficient for their basic needs. Um, of course, <laughs> that, that takes a lot of change. And, and um, I was thinking as, you, as people spoke too about change, how, um, we keep saying again and again, for, forms have to die and be reborn, but it's the essential principles and laws that, that remain the same throughout. Um, thank you. Hi, this is Michael again. It just came into my mind that the three great uh, nations, uh, groups of nations, uh, being Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, uh, are said to be the three uh, that are necessary to work together uh, to save humanity, essentially. And if Russia represents religion, the United Kingdom represents government, or politics, and the United States represents economics, then perhaps we have a clue as to how these three great areas of the world nations must learn to work together. Uh, a thought, thank you. During the discussion on clean energy and the, the practical aspects of um, you know individuals dealing with these these challenges on the day-to-day -day level, I, I couldn't help but think about the um, the emphasis within the Bailey books of the the role of crises in evolution, and that these these crises present themselves in order to usher in these these new ages. And I was thinking of the the plan and the 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 golden age and the, these various things that are discussed in these various traditions. And it seems like these massive changes can't happen without some form of crisis. And so perhaps if a shift of perspective happened, um, that realizing instead of it being a, a burden or a difficulty, that it's an opportunity and seeing that seed of opportunity within it 
and perhaps those that are living that, you know, the, the hardest challenges day to day, if that ease of suffering and transition, you know, if, if people were to think more of a, a global body, perhaps it's this idea of kind of assisting those to make make that transition who are impacted um, more more of a way of challenge than than others. But it's this, I guess, it's this perspective of seeing there's this the seed of opportunity within the crisis, and it's it's challenging, obviously, when you're in the midst of it. Um, but then if if it's looked at in that way, a lot of times the changes happen faster and in a lot less um, painful manner than if um, if we we struggle against these things. Thank you. So much has been said, thought in our conversation together. So let us take some moments to draw together the thoughts and what we've heard, what we've listened to. And let's sink into the silence for a few moments and see if we can formulate those ideas into some seed thoughts. And remembering the quality of a seed thought, it's crystalline. Pure, potent nature. What words make a seed that is most relevant and potent that we can draw from the conversation? And before we go into our meditation, we'll just leave a few minutes of space and silence. If you feel to offer a seed thought, please unmute yourself and do so. And then we will move into meditation. If you would prefer to hold your seed thought subjectively, that is a fine way of energizing our meditation also. So let's take these few moments to bring the seeds together.
So as we offer our seed thoughts into the group chalice, let us visualize the space of focused intention, group chalice, group heart, making our offerings of seed thoughts. May our choices be motivated by the highest value defined by spiritual laws and principles. May leaders of politics, religion, and economics become truly soul-led in their work. Group works understanding, education, listening. I'm left with the word kindness um, and the idea of supporting those who are most affected um, as we go through these uh, transformative changes. May the causal principle of love wisdom precipitate into the minds of men, uniting divisions of thought and bringing group heart into right relation in all, to all of humanity.
through the energy of fire available through Aries at this time. Let us ignite the little wills of men to become consciously aware of cleansing their emotions and thoughts in pursuit of selfless motives for expressions in politics, economics, and religion. transcend competition and engender a spirit of cooperation in the major fields of economics, politics, politics and religion. As we continue to hold and generate these seeds, I invite Gillian to um, perhaps just say the Gayatri for us um, and those keynotes of Aries which you had. Um, identified for us for our meditation. Okay, thank you. Um, let us say or listen to the words of the Gayatri. O thou who givest sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, Unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Yes, yes. Sorry. Go, Gillian. Right. In esoteric astrology, it says that Aries governs the path of discipleship. It is the will to return to source. It is the determination to achieve liberation. It is the emanating cause of the changes upon the mutable and fixed crosses. Thank you. So as we hold our field with all those seeds and those Admonitions of Aries that Gillian has brought forward to us. And the words of the Gaia tree, our commitment to the journey. Let us come into alignment 
as we survey the topic again. Rising up to the causal level. Viewing our impressions from here. Seeing the work that we have done from this higher level as a synthetic whole. And we view the richness and diversity of the seeds that we have planted together. The fabric of the field we have woven. And we continue to draw on the will of Aries. As we tread the path of disciples. Let us say the great invocation to bring the energies gathered from above during this webinar to humanity. The great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Thank you, Gillian and everyone. Thank you, friends. So we continue our journey, learning through practice every day, monthly, and go in focus as a group 
holding the focus on the common good. In the next cycle, cycle of Taurus, we will be working with the energies of the fixed cross, working on the theme of economy of sharing and introducing the principle of sharing into the human endeavors. Thank you. And uh, Rebecca, do we have uh, any mantra to close our work today? I am the soul and also love I am. Above all else, I am will and fixed design. My will is now to lift the lower self into the light divine. That light I am. Therefore, I must descend to where the lower self awaits my coming. That which desires to lift, and that which cries aloud for lifting are now at one. Such is my will. Mm -hmm.